You have decided to postpone the first rate hike until the end of this year. Could you please explain why? Well, basically, this time when we looked at inflationary pressure, we realized that the inflationary pressure is a, a bit lower than uh, what we expected in the past. And based on that, uh, it, we felt that it would be reasonable to push uh, rate hikes a bit into the future. Mm. Are we talking December? I'm not talking about individual decision-making points at all. Time will tell. Okay. In the statement, uh, you removed language about it being important that Krona doesn't strengthen too rapidly. Is uh, that no longer a concern? at these levels? Well, I mean, lately the krona has gone in, went in the, the other direction because the krona has depreciated, but that actually remains because, of course, if the world were to develop in such a way that the krona appreciated very rapidly, that would make it harder for us to keep inflation at or around 2%. So a slow appreciation is fine, and in, in, in that sense, uh, I wouldn't say that tweaking the language a bit is a major issue. Okay. Do you need the krona to remain as weak as now in order to keep inflation near the target? Well, not really, because if you look at our projections, basically we say that over, over time, given that the Swedish economy is doing well compared to other economies, it's reasonable to think that the krona slowly would appreciate. Uh, but uh, what still holds is what we have said many times in the past, that it's important that it doesn't happen too quickly. Is the current krona exchange rate a good level? We don't argue about the level of the uh, the level of the exchange rate because we have a floating exchange rate. Have, we have had a floating exchange exchange rate by now for a long, long time, and an inflation target. So one just have one has to live with the fact that the krona moves up and down. Yeah, many of your critics are arguing that the krona has weakened too much. Don't you end up in a loop with the never weakening krona when you always try to avoid the krona from strengthening from the current level? No, not that what I can what I can see. I mean, the fact is that we have a floating exchange rate, and then things happen to the exchange rate. And the, the important thing for us is to meet our inflation target. And given our projections this time and our policy rate path, uh, that is uh, also what is likely to happen given the present monetary policy design. Mm. Is, a, is the threat of a global trade war something that worries you, considering the corona and the economy being very vulnerable to yeah, it? Yeah, I mean... For us, exports and imports are around 50% of GDP. We're highly, highly dependent on trade. And, of course, if things were to start happening to global trade, that would certainly affect us, and probably in a negative, negative way. What to make of it today, hard to tell, because the, the, the conversation so far and the various tariffs that uh, have been decided, they're not kind of major, major issues, but if it, if it continues in that direction for some time, then that definitely would hurt our economy. And service prices, are you worried? Well, service prices, they need to, to go up a bit more compared to where they are presently, because right now service prices are around 2%, and to get to 2% inflation, they would need to go up more than that. And exactly for this reason, we need to maintain a high level of aggregate demand in the Swedish economy so that there is a push for prices to, to go up. Okay. About cash handling, the Minister of Financial Markets, Per Boglun, told us that he's rejecting the Riksbank's idea of forcing banks to handle cash since that could distort competition and even result in brand, branch closures. What's your opinion on that? I mean, just from reading the emails from the general public, I just can tell you that the, the general public on that side they are enormously frustrated about what's going on in the banking sector presently, and something will have to be done. And either something is done in terms of passing a law, making it compulsory for, for banks to hold cash, or if you don't do that, well, then techno technically we're going to move to a completely different environment, and uh, that's why we're also looking into maybe in the future issuing a digital currency in one one form or, or, or the other, but as, as far as I can judge when it comes to people communicating with me, uh, the, many, many individuals in this country find it very frustrating that the banks are actually abandoning cash in one, one form or the other. So uh, I'd say then, well, talk to your politicians. So the argument about distorting competition It doesn't distort competition at all if it's com compulsory for everybody to uh, to, to handle cash in one, one form or the other. One should be, you also need to be mindful of the fact that it's voluntary to run a bank. And there are certain requirements, certain conditions that you have to meet when you write, run a bank. And uh, part of that, at least in my view, should be to handle cash.
Okay. About financial stability, uh, the new type of mortgage lenders that are entering the market like Enkla and other online brokers that are offering loans at low rates that are funded by short maturity mortgage-backed securities, are they adding to risk? It's too early, it's too early to tell that, that we have some kind of a structural change in the mortgage market. That's not surprising because if you take a longer view, in the old days, most mortgages were actually handled outside the banks. Then everything moved onto the balance sheets of the banks and then that you would be end up with a sort of a counter movement with things moving out of the balance sheets of the banks again. That's probably not a bad that's probably not a bad thing, but then one has to keep track of how this is happening, uh, what under what conditions and what these new players are, are, are doing. But if this increases uh, in efficiency in the system, that's probably just uh, just fine and the banks will have to live with that. But then, of course, one has to be careful when it comes to uh, the safety and, sound and soundness of, of these new institutions. Two banks in Sweden already lowered their official interest rates. Is it a good timing? Is it a good thing if mortgage rates fall further at this stage? Does that make it easier for the Riks Bank to raise, ra raise I mean, rates? It's up to, to the banks to decide when it comes to the mortgage rates. And the interest rate margin goes up and down over, over, over time when the competitive picture changes over over time, so this is not really a major, a major issue for us. We are not really into that kind of fine-tuning.